Well, welcome to today's research report, and our topic will be an update on robotic milking, also known as Automated Milking Systems, which is abbreviated AMS. This was presented by Dr. Trevor DeVries, uh, who is at the University of Guelph in Canada and has done a lot of research in this area. The advantage is that he lists, of course, uh, increase in milking frequencies, which allows smaller herds to go to three time a day milking without adding extra labor. Increase in milk yield because of this more frequent milking here. Improvement in core health parameters and improvement in fertility because in most cases, cases we are recording such things as activity, less labor because we're not milking three times a day in the parlor itself, and that leads to a better quality of life. Profitability may or may not be enhanced. The benefit for the cows, of course, means that they have basic freedom to be milked whenever they want to be milked, although they are rewarded with getting small amounts of concentrate uh, pellets in the automated milking system as well, in there, and therefore some improvement potentially in health and lower somatic cell count. Limitations to success, Dr. DeVries mentioned actually four of them. One, cows cannot milk. Number two, cows do not want to be milked. Number three, poor udder health. And number four, improper nutrition and nutritional management. So let's explore each of those briefly. In terms of cows not can't milk, this basically means that we have maybe too many cows in that milking system to be milked properly as far as that goes. So certainly barn design, traffic management, uh, uh, traffic of cows waiting to be milked and stocking density become important factors as well. They did a very extensive 75 herd summary in Canada visiting these farms and 67 of those 40, 75 were free traffic, which means cows can come and go. They're not required to go through the milking system to, re to reach the partial mixed ration or other uh, feed inputs as far as that goes. Because of this freedom, they saw compared to the controlled traffic, an increase of about 0.37 more milkings per cow, and that led to about 2.1 more kilograms produced by the cow under this milking system with the more meals. Next, they also look at such things as the bunk space, and on the average, 63 centimeters per cow was the average on these 75 farms, but that range had a plus or minus standard deviation of basically 21 centimeters itself. They discovered that if you added 10 more centimeters to the feed bunk in these farms, they saw an increase in feed intake, leading to an increase of 0.3 kilograms more milk as well. The second point was cows do not want to go to be milked, and that was primarily lameness. And on these 75 herds, 28% were clinically lame. That is the cows that have basically lameness scores of 3, 4, or 5 on the 1 to 5 system. And 3% of these cows were physically lame, which means they're limping very visible lameness as well. It also said that if we have cows that have exhibited lameness, that will increase the number of fetch cows. These are cows you have to go get by about 2.2 times more fetch cows because cows are very reluctant to come into the milking parlor. And of course, it decreases the number of milking. Uh, normal on average, 3.08 milkings per cow, lame cows, 2.78. And so that reduced milk yield by 1.6 kilograms itself. Mastitis was not related to the robotic milker, more of the resistance of the cow and, of course, the environment itself in terms of bacterial challenges for the mammary gland. And the variation was uh, some were dropping somatic cells by, by 50,000 somatic cells per ml. Other herds saw increase of 50,000 per ml as well. Push-ups were important, especially for the partial mixed ration. If we had, uh, they were averaging 12.8 uh, push-ups uh, in these herds. And if you added five more push-ups in these herds, that resulted in a 0.35 kilogram more milk production as well. And also they tracked the milk fat composition and there was a greater synthesis of milk fat, the denome synthesis in these herds that pushed up feed more often, reflecting perhaps a better rumen fermentation as well. There was an increase in ketosis in these cows because they produced more milk in the first seven days after calving compared to uh, other herds that were not using robotic milkers. So our take-home messages include, one, a robot uh, opportunities exist on dairy farms, but it's not just for the small farm. Typically, we'll see two units handling about a 100-cow dairy herd. We now see farms that have 20 to 
40 robotic milkers on the farm, much larger herds as well. And of course, number two, cow health and, and, and performance is a key factor as well. Number one, having adequate uh, time and space to be milked properly. Number two, adequate bunk space and feed bunk management out here. And of course, the risk to reduce lameness through uh, hoof trimming or strategic foot bath or use. Thanks. Have a great day.